They say that the most dangerous criminals are the ones who know how to blend in. And this guy is about to put that theory to the test. Cooper here wants everyone to think that he's just your average goofy dad, and he doesn't care who he has to kill to keep his secret. For the first time in his life, he's the one who needs to be afraid, but trying to catch him won't be as easy as they think. We're here to praise Zaddy Joss Hartnett for returning to the movies, and also break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to survive the stadium raid in Trap. This concert is about to turn into a death trap. Driving in the car on their way to the stadium, this teenager Riley here tells her dad Cooper to run the red light, but he reminds her that it's always safer to follow the rules. The two get in line to head inside, but that's when Cooper notices something strange. The place is surrounded by heavily armed SWAT officers, and they look like they're more than just your average concert security. They're having a nice time chatting before the show, but as they walk through the stadium, he keeps noticing that every possible exit is being guarded by several officers. Taking their seats, he spots more of the officers watching the crowd from up in the balconies, and that they're even pulling aside certain families with no clear reason why. After a few songs, the man lets his daughter know that he's going to the bathroom, but it's not to go number two. Inside, he opens up his phone and stops for a minute to intensely watch a live stream of a man chained up inside someone's basement. Meanwhile, he has no idea that a convoy of armored trucks just pulled up outside, and they brought FBI profiler Dr. Josephine Grant, who's about to become his new worst enemy. During the break between performances, the two of them decide to stop by the merch tent. Riley and another girl both want the same shirt, even though there's only one left, but he tells her to let the other girl have it. And the cashier is so impressed with his kindness that he decides to grab them one from the back. Seeing this as an opportunity, Cooper decides to ask the guy what's going on with all the cops. He says that he isn't supposed to tell anyone, but since Cooper seems trustworthy, he reveals that the whole concert was actually set up as a trap for a ruthless serial killer called The Butcher. They've got all of the exits locked down, and there's no way out of the building without going through a checkpoint besides getting backstage. Cooper here laughs it off, pretending to be just another ordinary NPC, but he's just realized that the officers are actually looking for him. Okay, it looks like Cooper here is in a bit of a pickle. Now that he's inside and the police have already got the entire place surrounded, he can't just walk right out without risking the chance that somebody is gonna identify him. There's no way out of the building without talking to the cops, except maybe backstage like the t-shirt guy said, but he'll need the proper credentials to get back there. To make things even more complicated, he has to account for Riley as well, and make sure that whatever he does next won't make her suspicious or put her in danger. On the bright side, the police still don't know exactly who he is yet. Right now, they're relying on a general description, so if his appearance changes, then it'll make him harder to recognize. It looks like they're working their way down, starting with the upper floors, which gives him time to think of a plan. This large crowd also provides him with some cover, splitting up the officer's focus and making it harder for them to single him out. In complicated situations like this, the key is to start by dealing with one threat at a time and shifting things back to give Cooper the advantage instead of the other way around. Since the police are looking for him based on his physical description, he should quickly do whatever he can to change his appearance. One way to do that is to go back to the merch tent and buy some new clothes. Not only will this throw them off, but everyone at the concert is going to be wearing the same stuff, so one of those hoodies can almost act like a sort of camouflage to help him blend in with the crowd even better. I mean, what are they gonna say? He's wearing a Lady Raven shirt? Maybe, but so are all of the other 20,000 people here. Next, I would try to create a distraction by doing something like pulling a fire alarm or faking a medical emergency. By causing panic in the crowd and redirecting the officer's attention, he can use the chaos to make a quick escape without being questioned. If he wants to go for a more stealthy approach, he can try using his psychopathic Riz game to get him and his daughter backstage. I want to stab you to death and play around with your blood. Like the t-shirt guy said, there's a chance that there won't be as much security in that area, but it also runs the risk of calling too much attention to themselves and blowing his cover early. 
for now, I think the best strategy is just to keep a low profile. He should use this time to scout the building for any exits that the officers might have overlooked, like air vents, windows, loading docks, and employee-only areas, and only resort to more drastic measures if he absolutely has to. Riley here wants to head back to their seats, but Cooper keeps wandering all over the building, secretly looking for any place that he might escape. The cops already have the employees only areas and even the main entrance completely blocked off, but that's when Cooper here comes up with an evil plan. Noticing a drunk woman at the top of the steps, he quietly sneaks away from Riley and shoves her down without anyone seeing, hoping that the distraction might give them a chance to get out. While the officers rush over to help her, he tries sneaking right out through the front door, but quickly realizes that there are even more reinforcements waiting outside, and his only only choice is to go back to their seats while he comes up with another plan. As the next song starts, the singer brings out a surprise guest through a hole in the floor, and this gives Cooper here another idea. He can't just leave without Riley, so he starts trying to convince her that they should both sneak down into the hole, acting like it would be a cool experience. The girl obviously thinks that this is crazy, and finally decides to ask him why he's been acting so strange, but he plays it off like he's just an awkward dad, determined to keep his secret for as long as he can. A little while later, Cooper goes to meet with the cashier, and the two of them head to the storage closet to get his t-shirt. While the man's grabbing the box off of a high shelf, he quickly seizes the opportunity to snatch the ID card out of his back pocket, allowing him to access the employee's only areas. Cooper asks the guy if they've made any progress with the investigation, but he says that the killer is still on the loose, mentioning that the police gave them all a secret code word to prove that they're really employees. Pretending to be curious, Cooper asks him if he can know the word, and since he's a firefighter, the cashier feels like he can trust him, revealing the code word is Hamilton. After getting the shirt, the cashier leaves, thinking that he's just made a new best friend, but in reality, Cooper here is still planning his escape. Using the card, he sneaks into an employee's only area looking for an exit, but ends up running straight into a large group of officers having a meeting. Instead of running away, he decides to eavesdrop on the conversation, trying to learn as much as he can about their strategy. As two more officers walk in behind him, he puts the badge on and quickly slips straight through the crowd, pretending to be an employee just grabbing a coffee. None of them have any idea that they're looking right at the killer himself, and on his way back out, he even grabs one of their radios, giving him the chance to listen in on all of their communications. At their seats, he puts on the earpiece just in time to catch some more important information. It turns out that they just arrested a different guy who was a wanted burglar, and he panicked when he thought that the cops were there for him. The doctor knows that the real killer won't make the same mistake and tells the officers to go back to searching the building. They don't exactly know what he looks like yet, but the captain reads off a list of possible descriptions, and one of them, a white male in his 30s with an animal tattoo on his right wrist, matches Cooper's appearance exactly. He covers the tattoo up with a slat bracelet, but the officers are steadily closing in. So he lies to Riley that he has to go back for his credit card, when in reality, he's looking to try out another plan. Back in the hallway, Cooper here is just about to pull the fire alarm when the doctor gets back on the radio. To his surprise, she calls out his exact plan like she can already predict his every move saying that only women and children will be allowed through if there's some kind of emergency and forcing Cooper to change his strategy once again. Okay, well sh there goes that plan. I guess the distraction tactic isn't going to work. And now that he's got this FBI profiler anticipating his every move, the police already have a backup plan for pretty much anything that he does. It looks like it's time to go back to the drawing board. First, let's start with the threats. We know that the officers have the employees only areas locked down, removing a crucial path that we could have taken. The fact that they're specifically looking for a man rules out 99% of the audience, and one of the descriptions matches him exactly Exactly. So it's only a matter of time before somebody notices. Now with that being said, we've also picked up some new tools that could help us with the escape plan. He's got the employee ID card, and even though they're all being watched, those areas still give him more options for how to navigate through the building. With the passcode, he'll have a better chance of blending in as a worker if he's questioned. 
The radio is huge because it gives him knowledge of their plans and movements, allowing him to anticipate where the security is going to be the strongest and possibly where he might be able to exploit an opening. He also knows all six of the possible descriptions and only one described him. Now that he knows who they're looking for, he also knows who they're not looking for, so he should keep that in mind if he's coming up with a disguise. As for our plan, altering his appearance is still the best way to go, so I'd start with the old ladder and a hard hat trick. Basically, the theory is that if you look like a construction worker, then you can get by just about any type of security without being questioned. Back in the employees only area, there were hard hats and uniforms hanging on the wall that he could borrow. Yeah, we take one of these, find a ladder or other general type of construction tool, and then just walk right out through the backstage access or a loading dock anywhere that would quickly lead out of the building while hopefully encountering as few officers as possible. Or if he finds a wig and puts on some tour merch, he could still try pulling the fire alarm and sneaking out of the building while blending in with the women and children. And it should hold up as long as he isn't questioned too closely. Cooper can help himself with the plan by using the radio to listen to the officers' movements throughout the show. By listening in on their conversations, he'll know if there's an opportunity during a shift change or if if something big happens that calls their attention away to another area. He could even use the radio as a distraction or to lure an officer into a trap. If he positions himself by a door, he could put a call through on the radio that tricks the officers into briefly leaving the door unguarded and then sneak out while they aren't looking. Or he could try to get one alone somewhere, ambush them, borrow their uniform and walk straight out the front door. Here's something else that Cooper hasn't considered yet. If the police think that they've caught the killer, then they'll leave everyone else alone. To take advantage of this, what he needs to do is find someone who fits the description and then frame them by planting incriminating evidence. As an example, he could write down something about one of the crimes that only the killer would know and slip the note into their pocket or backpack and then call it in over the radio. The police think that they have their guy and he gets to leave. It's a long shot, but it definitely could work. Instead of going back to their seats, Cooper heads up to a level where he spots a door with an access to the roof, but it's already covered by two guards. He'll need to cause a distraction if he's going to get through, so he comes up with another clever scheme. Sneaking behind the counter at the snack stand, he stealthily grabs several bottles of cooking oil and throws them into the fryer before setting the machine to the highest temperature. A few seconds later, the jars suddenly explode, showering an innocent employee in boiling oil and broken glass. The woman screams out in pain as the officers quickly rush over to help her, leaving the door wide open for Cooper to sneak upstairs, and he grabs an apron on the way to help him blend in. Up on the roof, it isn't long before he's confronted by two lookouts, but he plays it off like he's just a worker, saying how he needed some fresh air after what just happened. He passes the speech check when they ask him for the code word, but he's taken by surprise when they ask to see a card that he was supposed to get during orientation. Luckily, he finds a wallet in the apron with exactly what he needs, and the officers never notice that it's supposed to belong to a completely different guy. Realizing that he has them fooled, he decides to ask about the woman in charge, and they explain that she's a profiler who's spent her entire career catching criminals just like him. He's able to keep his cover for now, but the roof really won't be an option, so once again, it's time to come up with another idea. Back inside, he ends up running into Riley, who's starting to get upset that he keeps disappearing. He explains that he was just talking to her friend's mom, promising to come down and watch the rest of the concert. But with every second that goes by, he's closer and closer to being caught. As the show goes on, Cooper's racking his brain for any chance at how he might get out of this when Riley mentions something that gets his attention. At every concert, Lady Raven picks a fan from the audience to be her dreamer girl, who gets to perform a song with her, and then have a private meetup with the singer backstage. Well, backstage is exactly where Cooper here wants to be. So while Riley is distracted by the performance, he decides to work his magic. Finding one of Lady Raven's employees, he strikes up a conversation and starts talking about how much his daughter loves her music. 
It turns out that this guy is actually the singer's uncle, and Cooper here points out that his daughter is in the crowd, lying that she recently recovered from leukemia as a way to get his sympathy. The plan works like a charm, and a few minutes later, they're approached by the man and his assistants, asking Riley if she wants to be tonight's dreamer girl and inviting them both to come backstage. After being escorted right past the security, they're quickly greeted by another one of Lady Raven's assistants, who gives Riley a breakdown of exactly what to do when the singer calls her out onto the stage. The girl is still completely oblivious to what's going on, and when he looks down at the crowd, he sees the profiler standing just a few feet away. Okay, now it looks like we're finally making some progress, but Cooper still has a long way to go before he gets out of there. Right now, he's as close as he's ever been to escaping, but also as close as he's ever been to getting caught. The profiler is standing just a few feet away, and with everything that she knows, she'll be able to sniff him out in a second if they have even the slightest interaction. He's made it through most of the security, but now that they're backstage, there's a chance that someone could notice him right away and blow his cover if he does anything out of the ordinary. At the same time, Cooper has a big advantage here, because unlike out in the seats where everyone is either security or a guest and all eyes are on him, everyone back here is going to be busy with their different jobs at the show. Nobody who works on the production really has the time or interest in paying attention to what Cooper's doing. So he should be able to keep a low profile as long as he doesn't go out of his way to call attention to himself. Like the t-shirt guy said, this might be his only chance at finding an exit that isn't guarded and he just has to make sure that he does it in the safest way possible. With that being said, it looks like one of the better options here might be to take advantage of something else that he noticed backstage. In this area, there's a sick tent where they're taking sick and injured girls from the crowd for medical attention. Cooper could combine this with the lie that he's told about Riley's illness as a way to get them out. The medical tent most likely has an emergency exit for people who need to get out of there fast. While Riley's distracted, Cooper could approach some of the staff saying that she isn't feeling well and needs to leave the stadium like right now. Now it will blow his cover if they ask the girl about it since she has no idea about the lie, but his way around this is just to say that she's embarrassed and warn them not to bring it up. It's a believable story and the nurses there probably wouldn't ask too many questions. By leaning into the uh, concerned dad angle, he'll naturally be making himself more believable and less suspicious. Then all he has to do is come up with a lie to Riley about why they had to leave the concert early. But it's a lot easier to trick one teenage girl than to have to keep your cool while being questioned by the FBI. Being backstage also gives him the chance to create another distraction. As long as he's sneaky, he could unplug the speakers, mess with the power, or even try pushing the singer down some stairs like he did to that lady before. While the crew are busy focusing on whatever issue he creates, he can use the turmoil to walk right out the exit or even pretend to be an employee himself and act like he needs to get some equipment from outside to fix a problem. It's officially Riley's time to shine, and while she's jamming out on stage, he notices that the profiler is closing in. Needing to get out of sight, he quickly grabs a sick girl who's waiting for help and carries her into the medical tent, offering her an ice pack and some juice to feel better. Once again, the workers are so impressed by what a chill guy he is that they never think to ask any questions, and by the time that they're outside, the profiler is long gone. Now that it's almost time for Lady Raven's encore performance, the assistant tells them to wait here, saying how they'll get a chance to meet her once she comes backstage. Still working on his plan, Cooper asks if they can sneak out the back door once the show is over, and the woman agrees that it shouldn't be a problem. Right about now, it's starting to look like Cooper here might be home free, but the police still have a few more tricks left up their sleeves. After the performance, they're waiting outside the dressing room for a chance to meet the singer in person, when Cooper overhears some more important information. They're going to be stopping every man who tries to leave the concert, even the employees, which means that getting out just became even more difficult. The assistant says that Lady Raven will be right out, showing them the door that they'll exit through after they meet her, but there's a problem. It's yet another police checkpoint. And there's no way that Cooper is getting through without being questioned, unless he's personally escorted by the singer herself. 
they get their chance to meet the star a few minutes later, and now that Cooper here is starting to get desperate, he decides to risk it all for one last Hail Mary. Leaning in so that his daughter can't hear, he brings up Riley's imaginary condition, asking the singer for a minute to talk in private. He starts off with his usual goofy dad routine, but once he's sure that they're all alone, that's when his entire personality changes. Suddenly dropping the act, he openly reveals that he is the man that they're all looking for, and Lady Raven here is going to be his ticket out. Pulling out his phone, he opens up the live stream of the man in the basement, explaining that he can kill him at any time by remotely activating a container full of carbon monoxide. The only way to save his life is if Lady Raven plays along and sneaks him and his daughter out to her limo without being stopped by the police. Cooper makes it clear that he isn't playing around, and even tells her the victim's name just to add to the pressure. After thinking it over, she finally caves in, but what he doesn't know is that the singer here is already coming up with a plan of her own. With her leading the way, it's smooth sailing for Cooper right past the guards and into the limo. Meanwhile, every other guy in the place is being pulled aside for questioning, but the profiler still feels like they must be missing something. As soon as they're out of the building, Cooper tells the singer to drop them off at the nearest corner, but she has something else in mind. Just when they're about to get out, she stops Riley and asks the girl if she can come over to their house. Obviously, the daughter loves the idea, and while she's on the phone with her mom, Cooper takes out his own phone as a threat. But the singer doesn't fold, and after realizing that he can't get out of it, he just tells the driver their address like it's nothing, sending the message that he's still the one in control. Okay, this chick has no idea what she's getting herself into. This was supposed to be a trap for Cooper, but suddenly it looks like things might be going the other way around. It takes a special kind of stupid to invite yourself over for afternoon tea at Jeffrey Dahmer's. So I've got just one thing to say to you, Lady Raven. You just f***ed up. Don't forget, you're not just some random performer who had no idea what was going on. You've been thoroughly involved in this whole scheme from the very beginning. But then this guy just comes along and because he's got backstage passes and a daughter, it's like you suddenly forgot all about who you were looking for. The FBI set up all of this security, which had to cost like tens of thousands of dollars, ruthlessly scrutinizing every single man in his 30s because they knew that one of them was the killer. But you decided that it would be a good idea to go into a private room with this guy where there were no guards or even any other witnesses to see what had happened. That's great news for Cooper because you couldn't have made it any easier for him if you were actually on his team. But it kind of screws up the entire plan if you're going to give this guy the benefit of the doubt just because he has a very convincing goofy dad routine, don't you think? Even after what happened in the dressing room, you still had about 9,000 chances to get this guy caught on the way out the door. As you were walking down the hallway past an army of officers who were literally there just to arrest him, all you had to do was yell, that's the guy, get him. And that's it, the game ends right there. But I get it, you didn't want to risk killing the guy in the basement and decided to wait for the situation to cool off a bit. I guess that's understandable, but what in the hell would possess you to invite yourself over to his f***ing house when he was just two seconds away from just letting you go? Even if he escapes, you know his name is Cooper, he has a daughter named Riley, he's a firefighter, and he must also live somewhere nearby. With all of that information, the only way that it could be easier for the police to catch him is if he was sharing locations on his phone with the FBI director herself. Just let him go, tell the police everything you found out, and let the professionals capture him instead of adding yourself to the danger and making things even more complicated for everybody involved. I'm counting at least three different ways that you could have ended this, and that's just off the top of my head. But instead, you made the absolute worst decision possible, thinking that you got one over on him, when literally all you did was walk straight into the house of a guy who's wanted for brutally killing several innocent people. What do you think he's going to do now that you've pissed him off? I mean, good luck, Lady Raven. You're gonna need it because you just f all the way up.
Arriving at the house, the girl rushes out to see her mom and brother, excited to introduce them to her new friend. Wanting to be polite, Rachel here invites the singer in for something to eat, still completely oblivious to what's really going on. While everyone else is busy, Cooper takes the moment to have another private chat with their guest, reminding her that he'll kill the prisoner if she tries to spill the beans. He's back to acting like a family man a few minutes later, but when Rachel asks about the concert, that's when things start to backfire. She starts telling the story story of how it was all a trap to catch the butcher, explaining how the police found a receipt for the concert tickets at one of his safe houses, which is how they knew where to find him. Things start hitting a little too close to home when she brings up the killer's description and psychological profile, so Cooper here decides that it's time for her to go. But before he can kick her out, she offers to play them a song on the piano. The singer calls Riley over to sit next to her on the bench, stealthily snatching the girl's phone when she does. Cooper here is busy filming the performance, still trying to keep up the nice dad act, until suddenly, something happens that he's never experienced before he starts to have feelings. Just when he finally lets his guard down, Raven grabs the phone right out of his hands so that they can take a selfie. Cooper urgently starts asking for it back, but the girl gets up and runs straight to the bathroom, immediately locking herself inside. Now he's absolutely furious, but his phone is still unlocked and she's able to go back to the stream of the guy who's trapped in the basement. They can talk to each other through the camera, and by asking him a bunch of questions about everything he can remember, she gets a few details about where he might be in the city. Promising to get some help, she decides to go live on her own account, asking all of her followers if they know where she can find a house with a blue door and a statue of a broken lion. It takes a minute for the chat to come through, and Cooper is bashing on the door the entire time. But finally, one of her fans says that she knows the right house. Raven tells the girl to get an adult and help the man in the basement before quickly texting her driver to call the police. Now all that's left is to get herself out and she decides that it's time to tell the family the truth. Shouting through the door, she tells Rachel that her husband is the butcher, saying that she needs to run for her life. All of a sudden, the girl hears several loud thuds from out in the hall, and everything goes quiet as Cooper forces his family to move upstairs. That's when he starts coming back towards the bathroom, using his keys to open the door, and leaving the singer with nowhere else to run. Okay, this was actually a pretty sick move, but the truth is that Lady Raven here should have never ended up in this situation to begin with. I don't know why she kept insisting on going into the house when she could have easily just turned down the offer to come inside. Now that she has Cooper's address, she easily could have got back into the limo and called the police and then let them handle it instead of putting herself back in more danger. I mean, am I right or am I right? Now that he's about to break in, she's going to have to get more creative. Cooper here is a big guy, and he's a firefighter, so it won't be much of a fair fight if they have to square up. It also doesn't help that she just put him in a desperate scenario, making an already dangerous guy even more dangerous. I mean, take my advice, the last thing that you should ever want to do is start giving a serial killer more reasons to kill you. Now on the flip side, the police are already on their way, so if she holds out long enough, then they'll get there. Her driver is also right outside, and if she can get to him, then she'll be home free. Meanwhile, Cooper here only has a matter of minutes to figure out what he's going to do, so depending on how you look at it, she actually has him in a worse position than he has her. Right now, she's got two options, escape or fight. First, I'd try breaking out through that little window that's right behind her and climbing out to safety. Now, if that doesn't work, then the only choice is to kick this guy's ass, and even though you might not notice them at first glance, but the thing about your average family bathroom is it's actually full of improvised weapons. Mm -hmm. She needs to move quickly, but will start by putting soap and water all over the floor, right behind the door, making it slippery and causing Cooper to lose his balance when he comes in. Then while he's on the ground, we're going to spray cleaning products in his eyes as a way to blind and stun him from the pain. Before he gets in, we need to search the room for any weapons, like a towel rack or a toilet tank lid that she can whack him over the head with if he's still trying to come after her, or a razor or a pair of tweezers in case things get up close and personal. Take him down, make a break for the front door, run to the limo, and get the hell out of there and let the police handle the rest, Raven. Knowing that he has her trapped, Cooper calmly tells the girl to hand over all of the phones, asking her who she was just talking to. 
When he finds out it was Spencer, he opens up the live stream and is furious to discover that the prisoner managed to escape, putting his hand on her shoulder to sense if she resists. He makes the girl go out to the garage where he grabs his bag of tools from a secret compartment in the wall. After forcing her into the passenger seat of the car, he tells the girl to put on some zip ties, but she decides to use a trick to get under his skin. Using what she learned from the profiler, she starts acting like she's Cooper's mom, trying to distract him by bringing out his inner demons, but the plan backfires, and it only ends up making him that much more pissed off. Snapping himself out of it, he opens the garage so that they can go to one of his safe houses, only to discover that his family somehow managed to escape, and they're standing in the driveway blocking the car. Shocked, Cooper realizes that he slipped up by locking them in a bedroom without checking to see if they could get through the window. While Cooper sits there trying to work out a plan, the singer quietly gets out of the car and goes to stand by the family, saying that they can leave in her limo. Instead of chasing after them, the man only gives them all a last minute piece of dad advice before calmly closing the garage door. The police show up just a few minutes later with Cooper watching from inside as a SWAT team surrounds the house. Going to the pantry, he slowly removes everything from the shelf. By the time that the officers bust down the door, Cooper here is already long gone having escaped through a secret tunnel that leads into the neighbor's yard. But that was only the first part of his plan. After taking out one of the guards and stealing their uniform, he hops into the driver's seat of Raven's limo and speeds away, all without anyone noticing what's really going on. Once they're a safe distance away, Cooper turns down a dark side street and abruptly pulls over. Lady Raven here still even hasn't realized that she's in any danger, but she's hit with a bad shock when the man throws open the door and forces his way into the back seat. He handcuffs her to the bar before she can even react, taking off the disguise to show that it was her old buddy Cooper all along. And if she thought that he was mad before, he's really angry now. Getting back in the driver's seat, he says that he's taking her to a safe house nearby, and once they get there, he's going to make her pay for exposing the truth. Okay, well, third time's the charm, I guess. At this point, things are not looking good for our singer here. She's handcuffed, trapped, and fully at Cooper's mercy with no reason for him to hide his true intentions anymore. All because she put him in a position where he has nothing left to lose. This is what you would call not ideal and he's about to take her to a location that the police are completely unaware of. If he manages to get her there, then she might as well cancel the rest of the tour if you know what I mean. So it's time to start coming up with a plan, and fast. As long as he's driving, Cooper's going to have to divide his attention between her and the road, which gives her time to come up with an escape plan. Also, don't forget, she's not just another one of Cooper's average victims. She's a famous singer, celebrity type, so it won't be long at all before somebody realizes that she's missing. Even her driver should have noticed by now that the limo suddenly disappeared, unless Cooper somehow took him out too, which could mean that the authorities are already looking for them. Lady Raven here just has to survive and outsmart Cooper long enough for them to get there. The first thing she should do is start looking for anything nearby that might be able to help her out. The bar that she's handcuffed to should have champagne glasses, uh, bottle openers, corkscrews, and maybe even a pen or another sharp item and she could use these either to potentially unlock the handcuffs or as a weapon against Cooper for the next time that he confronts her. Instead of arguing with him, she should lean into Cooper's inflated confidence by pretending that she's totally defeated. This will make him think that she's given up on fighting back, and since he won't be paying as much attention to her actions, she can make more progress on the escape plan. While he's driving, she could cause a distraction by using her free hand to pelt him with something from the back seat. If she waits for the right moment, then she might even cause him to crash in a populated area, drawing the attention of witnesses and getting her help. Besides that, I'd keep one of those improvised weapons on my side so that the next time that Cooper here came into the back seat, I could wait for the right moment to launch a sneak attack and get away. As they go, she should pay as much attention as she can to the surroundings of where he's taking her. That way, just in case she ends up in a safe house, she can know what route to take if she manages to escape or where to tell the police to look if she's able to call for help. The problem is, once you're already in the safe house, it's already too late, so I'd do whatever I could to avoid ending up there even if it meant fighting for my life. 
As they're driving through the city, Cooper admits that he felt the urge for the first time in a while when he saw her performing on stage. They end up getting stuck in traffic, and while he's distracted, the singer starts reaching to open the back window. Finally, she manages to get it cracked, and immediately starts begging the crowd outside for help. Cooper rolls the window back up, but by then, the fans have already surrounded the car. At the same time, the singer manages to get loose by pulling off the bar that she's cuffed to and quickly jumps out into the crowd as the SWAT team rushes in to surround the vehicle. At this point, they aren't taking any chances, and when he refuses to get out of the limo, the officers have no choice besides opening fire. But Cooper is not dead yet. Approaching the car, they're shocked to find that he actually set up a decoy before quickly putting on some tour merchandise and disappearing into the chaos. Meanwhile, the police are just leaving Cooper's house. Before she goes, Rachel asks the profiler about her husband, but the woman says that he was so good about hiding his true intentions that almost nobody could have seen this coming. The kids are staying with her sister for now, so the profiler says they'll leave two officers outside for the rest of the night. Several hours later, the woman is making herself a hot pot of tea, when all of a sudden she hears Cooper's voice coming from the kitchen. Now that he's had some time to think, he realized that there was just no way he could have slipped up and left the concert ticket at a crime scene, which can only mean one thing. Rachel here snitched. Here's how it went down. Cooper's suspicious activities made his wife think that he was cheating on her. The more that she was paying attention, she noticed the smell of cleaning products on all of his clothes and would catch him lying to their neighbors without a second thought. One night, she followed him to a safe house where he'd go to think over his plans, left the receipt there, and put in an anonymous tip with the police. She hoped the investigation would prove her wrong, but it turned out that her hunch was right. Cooper here is more angry that she told on him than anything else, saying how they could have made things work for the kids if she'd let it go. As she crosses the room, Rachel quickly points out the pieces of pie left over from what was supposed to be Riley's big day, and convinces him to have one last slice before he kills her, too. Taking a seat, Cooper explains how he usually feels peaceful when he kills somebody, but this time he feels nothing but pure rage. It's something that he's never felt before, and it's because he knows that he'll never get a chance to see his kids again, blaming everything on Rachel even though it's completely his own fault. That's when Cooper finishes his slice, but when he looks down at his plate, he notices a strange white powder on the dish that he realizes is not sugar. It turns out that Rachel here found his killing bag and sprinkled some sedatives onto the pie when he wasn't looking, tricking him into eating it while he was too distracted to notice. Furious, Cooper pulls himself up from the table, struggling to get to Rachel before she can get away. Just then, he starts to have a vision of his mother standing at the front door, but as he goes over to see her, he's suddenly ambushed by two SWAT officers who already snuck into the house. Even though they hit him with the two tasers at once, Cooper here stays on his feet and starts kicking both their asses, until finally the profiler actually takes him down once and for all, or at least that's what they think. On their way out to the police van, these idiots actually stop to let Cooper fix something on his daughter's bike. Riley runs over to give him a hug, but after a quick goodbye, the officers load him into the back of the van, thinking that they finally have him caught. The only problem is, he's already using a part from the girl's bike to unlock his handcuffs. And it looks like it won't be long before Cooper here is back on the streets. Trap, M. Night Shyamalan's new movie, Dope. And I really think it's cool that she gave her daughter a vehicle for her to write her own songs and play a pop star in a movie. I mean, how cool is that? Uh, I really enjoyed the movie, and I have to say, everything that went down gave me 90s movie thriller vibes. But uh, let me know down in the comments if you would have done anything differently. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe, and check out that How To Beat playlist. Yeah, that one. For more videos just like this one, I'm the guy. I'll see you in the next video, and have a damn good day.